This is the all new Trek Damani that's being launched to coincide with the classics in April 2016. Yeah, now they've been working on this new model for the last three years and there are three key changes that they've made. So firstly, there's an adjustability here at the rear isospeed decoupler. There's an isospeed decoupler now at the front and they've also got some new material on the handlebars to put even more compliance there as well. When Trek launched version one of the Damani several years ago, they introduced a new concept into bike frames and that was the aforementioned ISO speed decoupler which effectively separates the seat tube from the seat stays and the top tube so it builds in loads more vertical compliance and therefore makes the bike more comfortable. So now they have changed the seat tube, it isn't actually a tube really at all is it anymore, uh, so they've got this slider here at the rear which you can see. Now if you put that right to the top that is the stiffest setting, if you put it right to the bottom that's the one that gives the most compliance, it's actually 14% more compliant than the previous model. All you have to do is remove one of the bottle cage boss bolts, so the lower one, and then that allows the slider to move up and down. So effectively you could tune the ride from super buttery smooth tarmac where you need the bike to be as stiff as possible right through to as cushy as you can for, I don't know, dare we say, pave or gravel. Now of course they can't fit a DI2 battery, even though this is a mechanical gear we've got on this bike, down this tube, which is not a tube, so they've changed it so that you've got all the junction box etc under the front bottle cage. The front end presents more of a challenge when trying to build in vertical compliance because obviously what you want to avoid at all costs is affecting the handling of the bike. Yeah, so normally the only compliance that you get up here at the stem is where the steerer tube flexes at the point beyond where it enters the frame up to where the stem is. So if you're a pro and you've got it slammed, you'll get very little compliance at all. But in adding this ISO speed decoupler at the front end, what Trek have managed to do is get that compliance right from the bottom of the steerer tube, just above the fork crown. That actually gives you 10% more in terms of comfort than an ordinary setup. So the way they've done it, is by effectively adding a pivot there. And so instead of just having one bearing rate at the top, you've now got two. And so that whole system can tilt forward and backward. And by only tilting forward and backward, the steer tube can then effectively flex. But it means that it can't flex side to side, so laterally. So therefore, your steering should, in theory, be completely unaffected. And I say in theory, Fabian Cantillaro has tested it, and so I guess it must be all right. Lastly then, we've got the handlebars. Now as Dan mentioned, they're made from a slightly different material to normal. The name, Isocore, gives you something of an idea. So they are carbon fibre still, but in amongst the carbon layers, they've managed to weave in an elastomer layer, so effectively it dampens the vibration. So whereas you might expect the ISO speed decouplers to absorb larger hits and sort of potholes and so forth, this is designed to absorb road buzz. So uh, like an abrasive kind of tarmac, the kind of thing that might leave you with tingly hands. So as you can see, Trek have been rather busy over the last three years, but importantly, despite this adjustability and that decoupler there at the front end, they have managed to keep the weight exactly the same as the previous model. And it seems to be doing its job. Cancellara has already won his first race on it back at the Strada Bianca in March. Now speaking of Fabian, this particular model here is the race shop version, which is the one that Fabian chooses to ride. So it's got a much lower head tube and a much longer top tube. So it gives that more racy position. Most of the Domani's that will be sold are the standard geometry that you'll be more familiar with. So a bit higher at the front and a bit shorter in the top tube as well. And there will also be a disc model, not in the race shop version as yet, because Fabian hasn't made the switch over to discs, but in the ordinary standard Domani geometry. They've got 12 mm through axles and they've also got flat mount disc brakes as well. As you know, we don't do reviews here on GCN, but I'm sure you're all probably wondering what this bike feels like to ride. So I'm gonna try and explain. Now, first things first, this bike does not have suspension, which is a good thing. What it has is extra vertical compliance. So in my opinion, or in my head at least, what the ISO speed decouplers do is allow the frame to flex a little bit more, but only in the right direction. So, if there was movement to be measured, I guess you'd be looking at single digit centimetres as opposed to suspension where you're looking at double digit centimetres of movement. So what the Flex does is it takes the edge off bumps. So it feels a little bit more like 
you're riding with a bigger tyre and a slightly softer one at that. The other thing about this bike as well that they've done is actually increase the room for bigger tyres. So I'm currently running 28s on this. If you have a look, there's definitely space for a 30, possibly even a 32, although I'm sure Trek wouldn't officially endorse that. It's worth saying though as well, although there's quite a lot of vertical compliance, laterally, this bike does remain very stiff indeed, both at the bottom bracket and also the handlebars as well. So steering and tracking is really good. So there we go then, the new Damani. Now if you'll excuse us, we're about to go and try and ride up the Koppenberg because so far today, no one has managed to ride it. Now if you'd like to see a pro bike playlist where there's hundreds of different bikes that you can look at, you can find it just up there. Or to check out another Trek bike launch, unfortunately I didn't get to ride it at the time because I was wearing a neck brace as you'll see, but I, we saw the new Amanda and that's just down there. If you want to subscribe to GCN it's free, all you've got to do is click on the GCN globe. And I have the Allen keys and put the saddle back up. Uh, it's my size mate, I'll just, I'll just ride it back today. No, I'll put the saddle up and I'll ride it. No, honestly, no, I'll, I've lost my Allen keys, they dropped out of my pocket. Yeah, all right.